all the time we hear about opium, opium, other people's money, getting other people to pay for what you want and things like that. Um, today we're going to dive into it a little bit, but on a, on a more granular ground level floor of it, um, opium or getting, using other people's money to pay for what you want is a very basic concept that people need to understand of how it works because they think it's high level math uh, trickery that's going on. It's really not the case. Um, what it is, is the money that you work for uh, in your nine to five job or whatever grind you have on a day to day basis, using that income to buy uh, assets, no matter if it's business, no matter if it's real estate, no matter if it's dividend stocks, no matter if it's whatever it is to bring you income. Uh, using your money that you work for to buy those assets and then other people will pay for it. Other people as customers in the stores that work nine to five. I mean, like, let's say you have a business, people that work nine to five to buy your products, goods and services, they're going to pay you that profit and there's going to be other people's money and that profit you can use to buy the stuff that you want. And again, keep it on a granular level is think of it like this. When you work and then let's say you go buy the car that you want, you have to go to work every day to keep making that payment. Or if you want another car, you got to keep going to work to buy another car. But when you use the money that you work for to buy an asset, that you only got to buy that asset one time. And that asset will keep producing money to buy you your first car your second car, your third car, your fourth car, but you only had to do it one time instead of going to work and having to do it over and over and over again every time you want something. So, Alex, before I go down the rabbit hole, what you got on that? Yeah, this concept was something that I didn't understand until bef before meeting you. After I met you, you know, I had known about passive income, investing and, you know, using that income, but the concept of using other people's money, I think it goes beyond even assets. Like if you can, even in negotiation, try and get the other person to honestly pay as long as you're putting the structure and the idea together to, and then having others finance that idea. So it's, it's interesting. It really is because it shows you the value of that you have in the work you're putting in up front and then that work up front pays for itself years to come so i like this a lot i really do and in the concept that you're talking about with real estate this is the best way to look at it too because we know most people aren't looking at cash flow in real estate. They're looking at appreciation or they're looking at just saying, oh, I have a rental property or, you know, the tenants are just paying the mortgage. But the income that you make off of those people and only having to put the work up front to get that property cash flowing and then it cash flows from there on and you get to raise rents and create your own and raise your own income is, I think, an infinite loophole to making money yeah and and i just want to keep it at a granular level i mean of course we could talk about opm of using the bank's money to do deals and stuff like that but I, i'm just keeping it at a granular level just to get people to understand how it works um so alex I always tease you about you know going to private school uh it i mean no matter what school you go to but uh <laughs> But it's just funny to me to talk about private schools. Uh, I'm from Detroit, the movie 80 Mile. Going to private school is like the funny thing. So that's why I always mess with you <laughs> about it. Uh, but we're going we're gonna, to uh, use your we're gonna use your math knowledge. All right. So um, all right, just so everybody know that, you know, you know how to do math. Let's do, all right, 2 plus 2 equals? 4. four. I can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And yeah. then. So 16 divided by 8 equals? 2. 2? 16 divided by 8. Oh, I thought, oh I, thought you said, I thought you said 0. Sorry, you got to <laughs> not say it. I was worried. I was worried. I, 
I was about to go to your mom and say, uh, Can you hear me? Go get your money back. I was about to say, Go get your money back. <laughs> it's, it's cool. He don't know what the hell. He don't even know basic math. All right. All right. So, so now, now I ask you. So, if if you make it $25 an hour, right? And, and your kid, and your kid wants uh, an Xbox, uh, I believe right now Xbox are going for. Maybe five six hundred dollars. Let's just use five hundred dollars as the base model. How many hours do you have to work to get the Xbox? Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. All right. How did you come up with that math? Uh, just asking. Twenty five times four is a hundred, and then you multiply that by five. So five times four is twenty. Okay. Math reasoning. You're correct. Logic reason, you're 100 percent wrong. Um, everybody, and that's why I wanted you. Well, I didn't know you was gonna answer it that way, but that is the epitome of how everybody looks at it. So Xbox costs five hundred dollars. I made twenty five dollars an hour. Then I have to work twenty hours to come up with that money. But that's not the truth. And I'm gonna break it down. Twenty five dollars an hour. In a month, how much is that a month? So 25 times eight is 200. Yeah. Eight. So eight. 4,000 4, before taxes. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's use before taxes. So what is that before taxes a month? 4,000. Should be. So 4,000. All right. So, and again, we just go, and this before taxes. I mean, we can put the 25% tax rate on there. So 25% of that, so it's like $3,000 take home, right? Right, right. All right, so $3,000 take home. $1,800 a month for mortgage. How much we got left? $1,200. Right. Rent or, or rent, whatever. Then you yeah. got lights. Yeah, then you got lights, gas, phone, water. So let's say, let's say at the end of all of the necessities, car payment, everything else, you got $100 at the end of each month, right? Right. So now I ask you again, how many hours do you have to work to come up with that $500 for the Xbox? Yeah, so you're gonna have to work five months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? And everybody, but everybody thinks that the math that you use, that's yeah. everybody thinking, oh, I make $25 an hour? That's all it is. No. No. You got to work a lot of months to come up with that money. Five months to come up with that money. If you have $100, now this, if you have $100 discretionary at the end of each month that you don't go spend on yourself. Right. Yeah. Now, that's if you don't go spend on yourself. Now, it's, if it's less than that, 15, 20, how many months are you really working or how many hours are you really working for that one Xbox? People don't look at it like that and then they don't realize like, why am I in so much debt? Because you thought you made $25 an hour, you only had to work, you know, 20 hours to come up with this, this box. But no, you had to work half the year to come up with this money. So unless you spend half the year not doing anything and then you just use your discretionary $100 a month, then okay. But of course, you know, most people can't sit in the house for a day, let alone six months, and not do nothing without with discretionary funds. So then they compound on top of that. So the Xbox is not really five hundred. The Xbox is six months worth of work plus all the interest that it accrued because you probably put it on a credit card plus all the interest, all the other stuff you accrued because you couldn't focus down on that discretionary funds just to pay for the Xbox. So really, you're working years to pay for one five hundred dollar Xbox. Yeah. And that's the whole secret of why we always talk about stressing using other people's money to buy the things you want. So if you're going to sacrifice all those hours just for one $500 item, you might sacrifice all those uh, hours to invest in something that will keep generating you the things that you want instead of, and then, it will keep generating it over and over and over again so you don't have to work those hours to do it. 
But that math, that math problem right there is what gets a lot of people in trouble. And that's why I believe that most of the United States and the world is in debt because they, they math and wrong. And, and as y'all people see, it don't matter if you go to a public school or a private school, the, the math is still the same. But again, <laughs> it's all about the logic of it that doesn't make sense. But Alex, what you got? Sorry for putting you on the spot there. No, it's okay. Yeah, looking at it that way definitely makes sense. And I don't know anybody that looks at it that way. Now, obviously, when you asked me the question, I was just thinking like you're just asking a mathematical question. But that you're absolutely right. That is how long it takes. And some people it takes longer because of their lack of control over their finances. I mean, in reality, if you're only able to pocket $100 a month after four grand before taxes which seems like how much it would be considering all of the expenses and stuff it's uh it's a sad position to be in because the question you should be asking yourself is where do you go or where can you start to get out of that hole you may not be in debt but the hole is you've only got a hundred dollars a month to free yourself so you either have to cut your expenses heavily but the better option would be to raise your income because you need more income in order to get out of that hole you need freedom because a hundred dollars a month doing the math on that i mean it's twelve hundred dollars a year if you've only got if you're gonna live till you're say even a hundred in 80 years you can save like a hundred grand i mean off of 1200 a month or 1200 a year so it's like you're stuck you're going to be stuck so you've got to put your brain to work to figure out how you can get out of that situation you have to yeah and and again we wanted to keep it rudimentary because i know everybody on on the social media platforms they want to go into the oh you can go finesse this and do this but first is look at your own your own company your own household i mean that's how i look at a household as your own company you got to understand the finances at that minute level of your own home and your own foundation before you can go out into the world to manipulate it, to get them to pay for your wants. Once you understand where the money is going and how much it costs, actually costs and how much time you're actually spending to buy the things you want, then you will realize it's much easier, much easier to use the money you have to have other people for, pay for the things you want by investing in assets, then you sitting there bumping your head against the grindstone every day, waking up at seven o'clock in the morning, going to a job that you hate. You're still gonna have to go to work no matter what, but going to a job that you hate and then it's taking you forever. You gotta go into debt to buy the things you want. It's way easier to just go take the money, buy assets, have the assets pay you a drip, pay you a monthly, weekly, quarterly payment. And then use that money to buy it. Because why? Because the asset will still keep producing without you working. As long as you keep buying it with the job that you have, you have to keep working to buy a new. And it's just human nature, especially here in America. We are consumers. We're always going to want, 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 want. So that means we're going to have to keep working, 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 working. When you could just do it one time and have everybody else work to buy your services, buy your goods, rent from you pay you dividends uh, on investments or things like that. You only got to pay for that one time and then the money start coming back to you. So just something to hopefully people think about and hopefully some people start changing their ways to realize that there's an easier way out there. But I mean, like for my family, our whole lifestyle is paid through other people paying for it. We spent our early years of saving Saving, investing, saving, investing, saving, investing. And then now everybody else, no matter if it's through stock options, selling stock options, no matter if it's in service and products, it don't matter if it's in uh, rental income, everybody else is working to, and working to pay for the goods and services that we invested in. And then we use that money to buy the things that we want. So the money that we work for is just sitting here to find other investments to buy other things so people can buy the things we want. It affords our lifestyle. It pays for everything in our lifestyle. But if 
we lost everything today on the income side, our personal income side, jobs, pensions, retirements, things like that. We still have everybody else sending us money because they're buying the assets that we produce. Well, that means said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.